I have with me Kate Lash. Uh, she's an intimacy coordinator at IPSA. Um, I'm not going to try and say the whole long name, uh, but uh, she coordinates intimacy on a film set. And uh, there has been uh, new developments in this area uh, in South Africa. Um, Kate, uh, what are they? Um, well, the new development is on the 14th of April of uh, this year, we launched some intimacy protocols some guidelines for working with intimate content on TV, film um, and associated media. Um, and these have been created in conjunction with the South African film industry. So SASFED, IPO, SWIFT. Sage, uh, IBFC, um, all sorts of organize all the organisations, writers, casting directors, agents, uh, actors, uh, Saga, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and these provide guidance on best practice and working with intimate content. Um, so whether you're a producer, a director, a writer, an actor, you can look at these and that will give you guidance on how, what best practice looks like, what, uh, what things you can put in place to make sure that the actors are protected and kept safe and respected and work within their boundaries. Um, and also kind of show you things you should consider when you're writing intimate content or if you've got auditions coming up or how you're going to cast the actors or conversations you should be having. And, and then also highlighting when you should you think about using an intimate coordinator on your project um so yeah so that's that's what what we've done why was it necessary to uh, put uh, such regulations in place um well although they're not reg regulations strictly in terms of they're not legislated you don't have to do it um globally there's been a shift and an understanding that um, intimate content had never really historically been looked after in a kind of professional manner. So whereas stunts and stunt coordination had been in place for many years, and if there's a fight scene, a fight scene was choreographed and, and directed by experienced professionals, any intimate content had previously been either left to the director to have a go at or for the actors to muddle their way through. Um, and obviously because you're dealing with... Um, simulated sex moments or uh, nudity, partial nudity, um, they, there's, there's often a risk of people's personal boundaries being um, pushed to places they don't want to go, to go or agreements not being put in place or people not knowing what was expected of them. And then there's a, a huge risk of um, sexual assault or sexual harassment that could happen mid-scene um, and leaving actors in a position of extreme vulnerability. Um, and so really we're at the time now, I think in a kind of a post Me, Me Too world that we live in um, of addressing this um, and starting to, to think about how we can approach these scenes professionally and respect and um, respectfully. Is the uh, problem in the film industry of uh, borders being crossed? I think I think there it's been sort of proved really now globally that actually there has has been ongoing issues for 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 decades. Um, it, Harvey Weinstein was obviously the catalyst for the conversation to change um, and for people to start sharing their stories. But what actually we're finding now is it, it, it wasn't located just in Hollywood. In fact, every country has a similar story. Um, in 2017, I think, Swift, who's the sisters working in film and television, they did a look at sexual harassment um, in the film industry more widely, not just the actors, but in fact, the whole crew. Um, and they found that here in South Africa, that sexual harassment, sexual assault were one of the key contributors for women just simply leaving the industry. Um, and so they put into place sort of codes of contact, conduct, which were sexual harassment policies. And the intimacy coordination kind of followed then on the back of that. Um, Swift initially invited me over to chat in 2019 to the Durban International Film Festival to talk about intimacy coordination because they'd heard about it in Europe when they'd been there at the Berlinale. So, um, so yeah, there has been, and they, they're, they're, it's a difficult environment. You're often dealing with young, young people, young women and men, coming into the industry um, and trying to have to get work from people who are much more powerful than them, whether that's the, act, the directors or producers or more senior actors. Um, and it is it is an industry where you kind of have to sell yourself. You are the product. And that line over over, you know, decades has been has been. I mean, everyone always used to refer to casting couch, couch situations and things like that. 
that that is a world that's existed. Or oh, if you do this for me, then I can advance your career in such a way. Um, and and we sort of now at a stage where that needs to change. That narrative needs to change. And and with protocols as well, we can educate uh, young professionals coming into the industry and say an audition should be in a professional environment. It will never be in a hotel room uh, or in a private space. Um, you know. And if you have concerns about anything you're being asked to do, talk to your agent talk to the casting director, take somebody with you. Um, and so hopefully we'll start to really change this from kind of from the from the bottom up and make sure that the also the young filmmakers who are in the in the drama schools, in the film schools, we can teach them as well how to how to write their scenes, how to consider their actors, what what was what they can put in place so that when they go into the industry, they're also taking best practice with them, both in terms of intimate content, but also how to treat treat people with respect on set and in the workplace. Um, and again, I think that's a global shift as well. I think bullying and harassment are, have been ongoing and rife in the industry for years. Um, and I think that's actually a collective movement that actually is happening as well at the same time. On a, a practical level, what, what does it entail? What can an actor and actress expect when they go on set and have to perform a, a nudity scene? Um, on a practical level, if the protocols have been engaged, um, what they can expect, hopefully, is that when they've arrived in the audition and they've looked at the scripts, that the director is very clear with them the way they intend to shoot that scene what their vision for the for the show or for the film is um then the actors already in the knowledge of that before they even sign the contract um at contracting stage then they can then specify i'm comfortable showing my side breast um, but i'm not comfortable showing my nipples for example or i don't mind you seeing the side of my buttock but i don't want you to shoot my butt my buttocks from behind so that's all happening pre-contract and contract stage then when we get into rehearsal, if they've got an intimacy coordinator on board, board, the intimacy coordinator can then work with production and say, OK, what's the storytelling in this moment? What, what, are we, what is the narrative? What are we trying to say is happening between these two characters? And they can really then dig into actually what the, what the story is between the characters that's led them to this intimate moment. And the intimate moment could be simulated sex, but it could, but could equally be, be more simple. It could be um, the touch between a parent and a child, or it could be a woman giving birth, for example. And what we're looking to do is always facilitate the storytelling. How do we, how do we make sure that, that we're not having actors who are acting all the way up until the moment of intimacy, then in some sort of point of crisis going through the intimate moment, moment and then acting again afterwards but actually acting their way right the way through the arc um so we'll have these sessions with directors and the actors and we'll look at their physical boundaries what they're comfortable touching not touching being where they're comfortable to be touched or not touched what the wardrobe has been suggested what they're comfortable with there that that, that then works with their riders and we'll get some sort of rough shape in place uh, in advance of the of the day of shoot ideally Sometimes this can't happen in advance because there's just not the timing. And then we have to do all of that, that blocking on the day of the shoot. But it's best if it happens in advance. And then we go sort of between that moment of the rehearsal and the moment of the shoot. We just, again, double check everything. Make sure the actors felt comfortable with what was blocked and discussed. If they've got any concerns they want to talk about, we can talk about the, to the director and if they're happy with the way everything went. And then we, um, and, and with wardrobe, making sure everything's in place for the day. And then on the day, on set, you'd have the intimacy coordinator with the director and then working with the two actors. And we check in with them again, make sure they still felt comfortable and that every, there wasn't any issues for that day. And then we go to, 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 to filming the scene after initial blocking. And then during that, we'd be looking, um, we'd be looking in the monitors. We would see if if what we had created was reading appropriately uh, on the screen, um, making sure the actors remain comfortable and kind of holding the space in between takes, making sure they were covered um, immediately between takes, and making sure they weren't left uh, uncovered for for any reason at any point during the shoot. And we'd also then be really instilling the the, the closed set and making sure that that protocol. So all the monitors would be switched off apart from the essential um, crew. Yeah, which we would then go through the through the film we would cut it everything the set would then the, the actors would be covered the set would then be opened up um and then we would um 
actors would leave the set and a couple of days later we would then check in with them and make sure that everything was still fine and that's really the way it works on a day-to-day -day basis we're always keeping it's a kind of a conversation that starts before and it goes right the way through the arc onto the other side so um, it's a controlled environment right through from the beginning right. to the end exactly <laughs> exactly um yeah which is great for the actors because then there's no surprises on the day um yeah. You know, and, and then also they can, it's quite often when we've blocked it in advance, what actors will say to us is kind of like, oh, do you know, it's usually I just spend weeks stressing about that one day that's coming up. And if you've managed to have a chance to even block it before we've kind of gone into production, it's just another scene. You know, this day I know I'm doing this, this I'm doing a car chase, this I'm doing a fight, that's got my intimacy day, da, 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 da. And it just becomes another one of the days. Um, but I think before people just didn't know and they didn't know what the chemistry was going to be like or, or, or what happens if they did something that would offend the other person. And, and so actually managing it in advance gives them real confidence just to, just to play those scenes running up to it with the confidence knowing that, that on, the, on the day when they come to do that scene, it's part of the storytelling like the, all of the other scenes. And in terms of this environment that you are creating, um, where can actors and actresses go uh, when uh, they feel that borders are being crossed and that their uh, privacy uh, is being uh, jeopardized? Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. It depends what has been put into, in place for them um at the at the outset of the of the job so if they know that there is an intimacy coordinator on the project then that would be the first person they would go to and certainly after each scene i always do a report and send it back to production and then i can flag the any issues that have been raised raised to production and then production can then take that issue forward um if they're if there aren't any, if there isn't intimacy coordinator there, what you generally find now, because of the work that Swift had previously done in launching the Code of Good Practice, most film and TV sets do have an agreement in place regarding sexual harassment in the workplace. And they do have, um, it shows on those policies, it shows you how to report and if there's an issue, where to, to, to bring that up. So that would be the first port of call to go to the production sexual harassment policy and see if what has happened to you is, is, is contrary to that agreement. And then you've got something very clear that you can take to the producers. If that's not working, then obviously um, most actors, not all, but most actors um, have an agent or equally, they also have come through a casting director. And, and when we were creating the protocols, the, the Casting Directors Association were, were really clear that they feel a responsibility for the actors that they find and they put on projects. Um, and they said that they would always be happy for actors to go back to them, you know, and say that when you you did this breakdown, there wasn't any mention of nudity. It said there was a kissing scene and then I was on set and, and, and I was asked to do X, Y and Z. Um, and that's a really, it's, it's a really interesting shift. It's, it's quite difficult because we don't have the law protecting the protocols themselves, but we do have a law about sexual harassment in the workplace you know and um and you know it, it, equity at the you know the right to equity and dignity and respect in the workplace um and which sexual harassment is a violation of so so actually then of course if it's sexual sexual assault um which would be any kind of um uh, unsolicited touching where someone has the intention of touching and uh, which of course uh, simulated sex scenes can fall into the world of um then it becomes a legal matter for the police as well so um obviously sexual harassment is is caught is kind of in the world of work but sexual assault is is, is a criminal offense so then you could actually take it right the way um uh, to to the police if if that was the kind of violation we were talking about Greg Rush, uh, intimacy coordinator at ipsa thank you very much for talking to us